Planet Dolan. Lots of people spend time worrying about whether their produce is genetically modified. The answer is yes pretty much every time. Basically every food you eat has been selectively bred and genetically modified, usually over hundreds of years. That's why they're edible and taste good. If not, they would look and taste very different. Here are 10 examples of how. I'm Danger Dolan and today I will be your narrator. Number 10. Ancient texts describe the watermelon dating back to over 5,000 years ago. The ancient Egyptians began cultivating wild watermelons, even though at the time they were mostly bitter, hard, and unappetizing. Ripe melons at the time were yellow on the inside. Because they tasted bad, it's widely suspected that the actual water content of the melons was the primary reason for the melons' cultivation. It could be stored for a long period of time as a water source. It wasn't until about three millennia later that the watermelon was selectively bred to the point that it was described as sweet. That would be just about the time the melon started turning red as the gene that governs the sugar content also turned the melon red. Number 9. The avocado dates back to prehistoric times when animals were a lot larger. And that's important because the seed in an avocado is, well, kind of gigantic. Like many edible plants, the avocado survived in the wild by having its seed-bearing fruits eaten by animals, then pooped out somewhere else where it could grow. There are a small number of animals big enough to eat the avocado and its seed whole, so it should have died out as the Earth's fauna began to shrink down and there were less animals to eat it. Put simply, the avocado should not exist. And the only reason it does is because humans like them. The avocado became a staple food in Mexico, as well as Central and South America, around 500 BC. At the time, the avocado was more seed than flesh, so they cultivated and bred it to make the seeds smaller and the edible parts bigger. Number 8. The strawberry as we know is actually a crossbreed of the Virginia strawberry and the Chilean strawberry. The Virginia strawberry was hardy and grew lots of fruits in any climate, but the fruits were very small. The Chilean strawberry grew large fruits, but could only grow a few berries per plant, relatively fragile. Both plants were migrated to France in the 1700s, where they crossbred into a hybrid variety. The resulting crossbreed is the common ancestor of probably every strawberry you've ever eaten. Number 7. The wild cucumber is related to the domestic variety, except that the wild cucumber isn't at all edible. Wild cucumbers still exist, and unlike their oblong fleshy cousins that we grow in our gardens, wild cucumbers are just big spiky seed pods that are effectively weeds. There is no juicy flesh in the middle at all. The middle of the wild cucumber is four seeds and two pods held in place by some stringy vines. Number 6. Historically, the wild carrot is a tiny yellowish white forked root that takes two years to fully cultivate. Through selective breeding and domestication, the carrot is now a huge single orange root that grows annually. Without that domestication, there is basically no way humans could actually eat them, as they were far too small, and the biannual growing season would never have been worth it. Number 5. Pumpkins are like avocados in that they adapt to the world with gigantic mammals roaming around more than 10,000 years ago. Whereas pumpkins, as well as squash and other gourds, were hard, softball-sized and unfit for human consumption at the time. Many were actually toxic. Only larger mammals like mammoths could stomach the toxicity. Humans actually started cultivating pumpkins as containers and flotation devices. It wasn't until centuries later that they started breeding the toxicity out of them and using them as a food source. Number 4. Kale, broccoli, brussels sprouts and cauliflower are actually all descended from a common ancestor, cabbage. A wild cabbage grown in Greek and Roman gardens 2000 years ago was crossbred and mutated into a number of different varieties. Cabbages with large flower buds resulted in broccoli and cauliflower. Genetic changes over time turned cauliflower white and gave broccoli a long stem. Kale results from a mutation in that ancient cabbage that gave the plant long curly leaves. Farmers isolated that mutation and started breeding cabbage that showed that particular characteristic. The result of those ancient farmers isolating that genetic mutation was the plant we now know as kale. So technically kale is, by definition, one of the world's oldest GMO foods. Number 3. The original grapefruit dates back to Barbados in the 17th century. The sweet orange and pomelo were both introduced to the region from Asia around the same time and they cross-pollinated, creating the hybrid fruit that was the grapefruit. But those early grapefruits had white or light pink flesh. Most of the red grapefruit you eat is literally an invention. The ruby red grapefruit was simply a marketing term that was granted a patent in 1929. Later versions of the grapefruit were made sweeter and redder by forcefully mutating them with ionized radiation. Number 2. 
The eggplant, the actual one, not the emoji, has some pretty uniform characteristics. It's oblong, dark purple or black, relatively thick, but historically they used to come in a variety of colours, like white, blue, lighter shades of purple and even yellow. They were much, much smaller and they had a spine running through the fruits, not unlike an apple core. Number 1 Bananas are one of the earliest cultivated fruits dating back to about 8000 BC. And even back then, they knew how to use selective breeding to grow fruits that were easier to eat. See, the wild banana was short, green, and absolutely packed with seeds, making it impossible to eat the way we eat bananas today. Through thousands of years of cultivation, the seed content was reduced, and the fruit size increased, eventually resulting in the bananas we know and love today. What? Danger Dawn, did you know that we have a countdown book featuring some of our best scripts on sale now? Links down below for the physical and ebook versions. That is it for this countdown, have a good one! Thank you.